Yo, what's going on? It's your boy, producer Mike. New location, new background. Made the move to Florida, Miami Beach. Just jumped right in. No connections, no nothing. Just, just jump right in from Bayonne, New Jersey, right across the river from New York City. So if you want to hear about how I practically moved from New York City to Miami Beach, Florida, for less than $1,000, keep watching. Long story short, wife and I said, hey, let's take a road trip, let's go to Florida, let's see what life is like outside of the city. Maybe it's better, and that's what we did. We came down to Florida, hung out West Palm Beach, did some swimming, beaches, shopping, malls. It's beautiful, it's incredible, super good. You probably see it, you know it's good. But then my friend, he's a real estate agent in Miami Beach, he moved here six months ago. He's been killing it. That's where you have to live. That's your roof deck. Crazy, wow. Super high end, super beautiful, super nice. That's what we sell. We sell Miami, baby. He was like, yo, gotta come through. Let's shoot some videos. Let me show you what it's like. Let's hang out for a few days. Come see. So that's what we did. We went to Airbnb for three days in Miami Beach. Yo, Florida is where it's at. Hang out with my friend. He showed us the good life, talking about people jogging on the beach you know, fitness, beautiful women, cars, people, Ferraris, apartments, shopping malls, everything's clean, no crimes, and incredible living for a great price, incredible value. I'm not even trying to sell you anything, but Miami Beach was incredible. We loved it. Three days turned into one week, one week turned into two weeks, and then two weeks turned into three weeks. And while we were here in Florida on vacation, I've never got so much work in my life while I was on vacation. And that alone showed me that, you know what? Let's do it. Let's just jump in, like we'll figure it out, YOLO. So that's what we did. My wife and I went on Zillow, started looking at apartments, and reached out to all these agents. These agents, you know, nobody picked up, nobody messaged back. So we went on Facebook, we did it ourselves, went on the marketplace, started looking at all the photos. And I'll tell you this really quick, Miami and Miami Beach, two separate worlds. Miami, it's nice by the waterfront, is basically like a New York City with palm trees. Super nice by the water. You take a few steps in, a few blocks, it gets really ghetto, closed, lockdowns, homeless, tents, it's not good. Miami Beach, if you're gonna do it and you're gonna make the move, come to Miami Beach, it's like paradise. Beach, like, it's like the lockdowns never happened here. It's super good, like, it's just the good life. So, back to apartment searching. Facebook, uh, we started DMing landlords, all these people, and one place actually, uh, they responded to us, said, yeah, come through, appointment, we checked it out. Nice apartment for what the value was, it actually became the apartment we have now. Still setting up here, but basically in Bayonne, New Jersey, which is right by New York, I was paying 1200 bucks for like a 400 square foot little dinky apartment here, roughly 700 square feet, brand new, renovated, new floors, dishwasher, laundry, dryer, balcony, private parking, walking closets, and 700 square feet for $1,350. So it's like only $150 extra, but you get all this stuff. In Bayonne, I had none of that. What we discovered was Miami Beach, it's like this whole strip, You've got Bell Harbor and Sunny Islands, which are like super luxury, very expensive. Like if you're gonna rent, it's probably gonna be like three to five, six, seven thousand dollars, maybe more. Um, you got Surfside, which is like around seventeen to twenty-five hundred, and then you have North Beach, Atlantic, which was the area we found. Um, is roughly like thirteen, like twelve to seventeen. Go a little bit west into Normandy Island. It's like nine hundred to fifteen. Um, and then you go out there, you got North Bay Island. Uh, I'd say it's around that as well, like 900 to 15. You go down a little bit South Beach. It's nice by the water. It's a lot of tourism, a lot of hotels. Parking there is not good. It's very expensive by the water. If you go a little bit towards West, um, the apartments there become a lot more affordable. However, there's no parking there. So you gotta park on the street and there's no street parking. That's why we decided to move to the mid part of Miami Beach where we found this incredible apartment. And what did the, I guess the management company ask from us when we moved here? They wanted to know that I was employed, that I was like making money. They either want pay stubs, like your two recent pay stubs, or a guy like me, I'm self-employed, they want the full year bank statement. They wanted also just to see um, a, a, a letter of recommendation or something, just, just to show that I, I have a client that I'm working with here, that I'm not just moving from New York City and have nothing here. They want to see that I'm working with a Florida business. So bank statement, work uh, referral thing, 
um, my ID, and oh, credit, make sure your credit's like 620 plus. If your credit is below 620, they may just reject you or they'll make you pay like an extra deposit, maybe the last like three months of deposit. Me, I got lucky, this place just straight up, I just paid them 1500 bucks for the deposit and they gave me one month included for free. So first month free, so 1500 bucks to get in. So I got a great, great, great deal here in Florida. So the part you've been waiting for, how did I move here for less than $1,000 from the New York City area? Less than $1,000 cross country move. How is that possible? I'm sure you've already gone on the internet, you've gone on Google, you've gone on U-Haul, and you looked at their quotes. And if you wanna do it yourself and rent the van, they're all sold out, or the wait list is too long, or you do find a car, they want like two, three thousand dollars just to rent the friggin' van yourself and take it cross country and do it. Like it's a lot of money. Or I thought, hey, let's let's hire somebody. Let's hire a company because you know they got insurance. Maybe they'll they'll do it. These professional moving companies they start at like three thousand, and on top of that, they take like one two weeks to deliver the stuff. So let's say you hire the professional company. Now you're sitting in your apartment with nothing for two weeks. So what I did was how we did this move for less than thousand dollars is I left my car here in Florida in my dad's house. I parked it there. I took the plane back to Newark and I rented a car at the airport because a lot of these airports, these websites like Orbitz, Priceline, I'm not affiliated with none of this stuff. Um, a lot of them have like combo packages where if you buy a ticket, you can get like a, a cheap car included at like a, at a reduced rate. So what I did was I bought the ticket, I bought the car and I got the bundle rate and the car turned out to be like a hundred bucks per day. Flew back to New, New Jersey, picked up the car, drove to our house. I'm back in this cold, dark place called Bayonne. It's like a dark, sour place. A place of, of saltation, Bayonne. There's nothing here, it's a place to dump. I'm going to Miami, the good life. I urge you to do the same. We'll see you there. And we went to the minivan because they had no trucks. But the minivan was enough because we had a one bedroom. And we just, like that two days, we didn't sleep. We just loaded up, we just packed everything, gave stuff away, sold stuff, and we just crammed everything into that minivan. And we drove um, about 24 hours from New Jersey to Miami Beach. The reason it took so long is I didn't rent a hotel. I had all of our important stuff in the car. So I didn't want to leave, you know, my computer equipment and laptops and cameras on the car while we're sleeping. So I just drove. I would drive for a few hours, sleep for 15 minutes, drive, sleep for 15 minutes. So it was a long 24 hour trip. Basically, the way we got it so cheap is we got the car at the airport. They have one way options with unlimited mileage. So it's pretty convenient. And a lot of these airports have minivans and trucks that you can rent. From, from their place. And they're like, at the time it was like a hundred bucks per day. Maybe it's a little bit more now, but the one thing I did find that if you book this stuff in advance, like at least four days to two weeks in advance, it's way cheaper. So that's how we did it. We drove down, we unloaded the whole car into the apartment and I took the car back to the airport, Uber back home and it was a done deal. What's up with the lease? I still have an apartment in, in New Jersey. What happened? So the way I broke my lease and got out is I did pay a deposit for a two-year lease but I'm cool with my, my landlord I told him the story I said hey listen you know New York City's done New Jersey's even more done there's no work here is done you can keep the deposit we'll make sure the whole place is spotless and clean and you know my my landlord he was a very cool guy he understood it and he let us break the lease I let him keep the deposit and it was, it, it all worked out. So that's that. Hopefully you have a cool landlord and they let you break, get out the lease. Um, if you don't have a good landlord, I've, I've heard in some states, if you don't feel safe living in your area or your home, it may be a way to get out. I'm not a lawyer, but you can Google that. I've heard people doing that and breaking their lease, but hey, just check it out. So that was our trip to Florida and how we did it for less than a thousand bucks. Hopefully it gave you some insight. Hopefully that uh, little airport rental uh, workaround still works and helps you out. And that's how we did it. What I'd like to do is make a follow-up video about our first month living here, what it was like, and what are the things that we noticed 
that you definitely need to be aware of in Florida because they could really ruin your property if you don't uh, take care of them. So I want to make a video about living in Florida for one month, the pros, the cons. It's been a lot of pros, it's been very good, like very little cons, but Florida definitely has its learning curve to living here and I want to share it with you in another video. So if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up. If you're curious about how we got here, anything else, drop a comment. I'm trying to be more active now on YouTube. I see you guys are, are watching this stuff and liking it, so I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.